Okay, today I'm going to talk about my Chromebook here. It's an Acer Chromebook R11. Um, and I'm going to tell you about the pros and cons, in my opinion, on this. Uh, so basically, six months ago, uh, I felt like my tablet, which was a cheap Samsung, it was like a 2014 model, uh, around 200 bucks back then, uh, just getting slow. It was no longer, even though I had a Cyanogen mod on it, uh, I couldn't upgrade to a newer version because it was unofficially supported. Because Samsung, they make nice hardware, but they're a lot like Apple in some ways. And although you can't unlock the bootloader, you gotta go through headache to do it. And then, so it's not, um, yeah, I wouldn't buy Samsung products anymore just because they make it so difficult. Some companies make it very easy to unlock your bootloader. Like I've had two Motorola phones, and it's basically, uh, yeah, here, just run this command and and put this uh, key code and you're good to go. You're voting your warranty, but whatever. I don't care about the warranty. Anyway, and the Samsung tablet started getting slow. Even if I formatted it and started from a fresh system, it just seemed to be running slow. I really only used it for reading comics and other things before bed. Um, so I was kind of in the mood for something new. Uh, and I mentioned to my wife, I said, hey, you know, I know it's like nine months away, but for Christmas, I would like a, uh, maybe a Chromebook. I was very iffy about it. Um, I was like, is it going to be locked down? Because one of the biggest things I hate about Android is eh, the way everything's compartmentalized, which a lot of people go, oh yeah, you know, this is, everything's in its own little sandbox, and that's a whole other topic. I think, oh, well, that, that's all BS. I don't think it's really security, it just makes things a headache. It's like you can do what you want to do, but you got to jump through hoops. But if you root it in an Android device, it's running the Linux kernel, so really nothing's really stopping you, just some things you got to jump through hoops to do. But if you have a Linux kernel and you have root access and you have room for storage, you can always cheer root into Debian or some other Linux distro as long as it supports the architecture. So I was very iffy about the Chromebook. Um, and I knew going into it that you could install Crouton, uh, which is a cheer root. And again, if you have root access and it's running a Linux kernel, there's really nothing you can't do for the most part. So I was like, okay. I asked my wife, I said, I know it's nine months away, but I might want one of these for Christmas. And she goes, you know, Father's Day is in a couple of weeks. I said, hey, yeah, it is. So I went online, I looked at a bunch of Chromebooks. Again, I picked the Acer R11. Um, it was basically the cheapest one that does a tablet mode, which is big for me because I'm mainly going to be using this as a tablet. Uh, the same exact laptop that doesn't have the touchscreen and the convertible option is... Uh, well, like 150 bucks. Uh, this one is normally 300 bucks, but I found a refurbished one for 200 bucks. And then a week later, I found that Walmart was selling the same exact model for 225 bucks. So I'd rather have spent an extra 25 bucks and gotten a brand new one. Plus, instead of white, it was like a blue, which is a little different. Um, but still, refurbished. I was, you know, I formatted everything when I got it. Uh, so, and it's working great. Uh, and again. I paid extra for the tablet mode. It's got there, one of the confusing things about buying this. Did I mention I didn't script this? I'm just winging it. When when you buy this, it's very confusing because you go on Amazon and they have this listed under uh, the same Chromebook that doesn't have the touchscreen. So you'll go to one thing, it'll have a big range of prices, and then you realize, oh, some have the touchscreen, some don't. You gotta be careful when you're ordering. Uh, some actually are running Windows, I believe. Uh, they had Windows models, so I guess they weren't Chromebooks, but it was the same model by Acer. Um, and they also had ones where this one has 4 gigs of RAM, which I didn't want to go below 4 gigs of RAM. They had 2 gig of RAM, uh, 2 gig of RAM, 2 gigs of RAM, uh, and I think they also had a 3 gig RAM model. Uh, and I, 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 these days, I wouldn't go anything under 4. I mean, you can survive, but just for regular uses, especially if you're running Chrome as a web browser, because that thing can be kind of a system hog, and that's how this goes. Um, but for the price, it's great. I love it. The hardware is pretty nice. Um, let's talk about hardware a little bit. Uh, my biggest concern, my biggest, the biggest drawback I see as far as the hardware, and again, this is not a beefy machine. This is a $200 machine, uh, $300 you buy it at full price. Um, but I don't expect it to be this monster of machine. I just want to web browse, run commands, and it does pretty good for that. I don't need a lot of system resources. I could do video editing on this, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but you're probably not going to want to. Um, biggest drawback hardware-wise is 
uh, it doesn't really have, well, it has function keys. So it has a row of keys at the top, which are your uh, back and forward in browser, refresh, full screen, uh, tiling mode, your volume, your contrast, all that stuff. And those are your function keys, but they're not labeled as function keys. Um, but if you, you also have a search button where your caps lock button would normally be, which brings up a Google search, obviously, in the Chrome OS. Um, but if you were to hit, see, and, um, it's one of those things you can't do when you're thinking about it. Um, I think if you hit the Windows, the, the, I'm sorry, the uh, search key and one of those, they actually function as function keys when you're in Chrome. Um, so my first guy, first of all, there's only 11 of them, so there's not an F12, which in your Chrome, I always used F12 to get into the developer tab to use the console and other tools there. I'm like, well, how do I get into that? You can also hit Control Shift I, which I've now gotten in the habit of doing even on systems where I have a full row of function keys. Another thing is it doesn't have your Windows key, which on my regular Linux desktop, I use that as my modifier key in i3 to run pretty much all my commands. And I do run i3 on this, which I'll talk about again in a moment. Um, I just changed my modifier key to be Alt. And it would have been great if they just put, because the Control key and the Alt key are both very huge because they didn't make space for that Windows key, that modifier key there. I wish they put a modifier key there. Um, just like a menu, make it a menu button that functions like that. You didn't have to obviously put the Windows logo on there, put the Google logo. I don't care what logo is on there, but it would have been nice to have a button there. Um, but as far as running it as a regular Linux system, super duper easy to do. First of all, when you get it, you hold down a couple of keys and you can look this up, look up directions for Crouton uh, or just Chrome OS into developer mode because that would be your first step for doing something. You hold down a couple of keys and restart it while holding down those keys. It asks if you want to go in developer mode and then it wipes the system clean, then reboots into Chrome OS, but now you have a root shell. And by root shell, when you're in Chrome OS uh, and you have Chrome open, you hit Control Alt T, and it opens up a shell in your um, in your web browser. And actually, it's a I guess it's a Chrome shell. But you type the word shell, and it gives you a regular Linux shell. But once you go in developer mode, now you have root access, and you can use sudo, and you're running a Linux kernel, so you can set up a true root which you could do manually, and I've done a hundred times, but there is scripts out there, there is scripts, there are scripts out there called Crouton, and there's different versions for different um, uh, interfaces, uh, desktop environments, uh, but basically it's very simple. I installed um, Debian, uh, and by default I did the XFCE uh, desktop environment, because that's what they had loaded in the script there, uh, but then I went and changed the startup file or copied it and created my own for i3 because i3 is the desktop environment I use on my desktop. So now, if I want to use a full version of Linux, I want to use Debian, all I have to do is uh, control T in the uh, Chrome, in Chrome. It brings up the shell. I type shell, and then I type in uh, sudo enter true root, sudo dash enter true root. And again, I'm like, if this isn't a tutorial, just look up Crouton for Chrome OS and you'll find the instructions there. And right there in the Chrome web browser, I now have a full Debian shell, uh, which I can run apt, aptitude, and so whatever I want from the Debian packages and, uh, and, and run them if they're shell commands. As far as a GUI interface, you can start xorg um, by typing something like uh, start xfce. I forget the exact command once you install it, and it depends on what desktop environment you want. But I change mine, I just type i3, and it loads i3. And this is in a true root, which a lot of people, I've done lots of videos on it in the past. But just to be clear, a lot of people don't, I guess it might just be your definition of it. Um, people go, oh, can I run um, Debian natively? Uh, when you're running in a true root, it's not a virtual machine. A lot of people think it is. Basically, you're using the original operating system Chrome OS kernel, but you're using the Debian file system. You're really using Debian. You're just using the only thing that's not Debian in there would be your kernel. So you are running natively. It's not virtual. Uh, it's not a, a virtual machine. Uh, but once you do that, it will open up your desktop, and then you can use, uh, I believe it's Control, Shift, Alt, and then on your top row you have a forward and back key, and you can flip between your desktop, your Linux desktop, whatever you choose, like I said, I run i3, and your Chrome desktop, which is very simple to do. Uh, I also, also, so newer Chromebooks are able to run supposedly natively Linux applications. Uh, mine is not one of those ones that are supported. Um, not a big deal, I just use my 
uh, cherub there. I mean, uh, for the most part, if I'm going to use this, I use the shell unless I need to open up GIMP. Like I did use GIMP when I was on vacation the other day. Load that up, load up GIMP. Uh, did what I needed in GIMP, and then I, you know, just exited out of the cherub. Um, and since it's not a virtual machine, you're not, you don't have that extra layer of virtual of processes running. Uh, you're only running the programs you're running. So by default, you have a shell running and then your desktop. So you'll, you will have the Chrome OS desktop and Chrome running there and, you know, i3 or, or GNOME or KDE or whatever you choose to run. So, I mean, you are running two things at once, but I've had no problems. And as far as using that GUI desktop interface, the only problem I've had, uh, besides having to change my modifier key to Alt because there's no Windows key, is um, when I'm doing dual screen up, there is HDMI out on this and I'll hook it to a second screen uh, when I'm at work. And um, the mouse trackpad works fine, but if I go to use the touchpad, it's off because it seems to think that um, the full resolution of the two screens tran uh, translated to one screen. So if I click in at the far left, of the screen, it's, a, it's right. If I click in the middle of my touch screen, it actually goes to the middle of the two screens. And if I go to the far right of my touch screen, it's all the way, it clicks all the way on the far right of my second screen. Uh, and I'm sure I can reconfigure Xorg to acknowledge that properly, but I just use the touchpad. Uh, for the most part, I'm not even in that desktop environment. I stay in the Chrome OS, but I'll use the Cheroot uh, shell if I need to use some Debian packages that aren't available in Chrome OS. Now, as far as running commands in the shell in Chrome OS, um, I, you can install Android applications on Chrome OS. And if you watch my videos on, on uh, Android that I did recently, I installed Termux, which is a great shell environment for Android applications. I have that installed as well. Now you might say, well, if you have a full Debian uh, true root, why are you, why do you need Termux? Well, the main reason I use Termux and not just the Debian shell is because it's very easy to use that to interact with the uh, Chrome OS environment. For example, if I wanted to copy something, like I showed you a lot of scripts where I would copy something uh, and then run a command that will create a tiny URL for me or do some other things. The, since Termux has those APIs that I talked about in the previous video, I can run a script that will open up the web browser in Chrome OS or grab the clipboard or put something in the clipboard. And a lot of just interacting with Chrome OS, Termux makes that very simple. Uh, where when you're in the true root, there you're, if you use Crouton, your download directory uh, is shared so you can copy files back and forth. But if I wanted to grab something from the Chrome OS clipboard and use it in the true root, uh, besides actually pasting it, um, it's a little more, I, I don't know if you could do that. You, I'm sure there's probably a way, but Termux makes it very easy to interact with Chrome OS. So I actually use that more than I do the Debian Chur root, the Crouton Chur root, because again, Termux has a majority of the commands that I already need. Um, one of the drawbacks though, again, it's an Android application, which are usually pretty restrictive, and now it's on Chrome OS, which has some other little glitches. Um, so I can, in right now there seems to be a bug in Chrome OS, I believe it's a bug. I can use Termux, I can install the API and run the Termux storage, which allows me to access the storage, so I can access my download folder on Chrome OS, but when I stick an SD card in, I can't, I can't access the SD card from, from Termux. I think I might be able to read, but I can't write, or maybe I can't do anything. So if I want to use scripts that I interact with stuff uh, on Chrome OS, I have to either interact with it in an accessible folder such as downloads, or I have to use my true root if I want to access the SD card, which is annoying if I, want, if I have a script that's going to bulk download some videos. Um, I either have to download to the internal storage and use up that space, which I have uh, 32 gigs on here, but I also have a 32 gig or a 64 gig, one of the two. I think it's a 32 gig SD card. I'd much rather put them on the SD card. Um, I can't do that with Termux just because of, again, that whole Android where it tries to compartmentalize stuff and it's just a pain in the butt. And then once you get on um, and should work, Termux can access your SD card, I believe, on an Android device, but for some reason there's some sort of running the Android applications in Chrome OS, it's even more restrictive. 
And uh, that's that again is one of the biggest drawbacks of Android is the way it's like this application is here, this application is here. You want them to communicate, which programs should be able to do. You can't. That's a whole. That's a whole other. I can go on and on about that. Um, so there's there's a drawback like that. Now again, once you're in the chat group, I can do everything that I need to do in Debian. Termux makes it easy to interact with those shells, uh, with the shell commands and the Chrome OS. But let's say you don't want Chrome OS at all. Let's say you just want to run pure Linux. Uh, it's one of the first things I got, again, uh, you run those, uh, the, the few keys, you go into the developer mode, you now have root access. At that point, you can change your boot device. And I actually, the SD card I have in here that I use for storage is actually a bootable SD card that actually has, I think I put Linux Mint on there. I put it in there, I booted to it just to see if I could. I wasn't really planning on doing that unless I really, really hated Chrome OS. And to be quite honest, even on my desktop Linux, I'm either in Chrome or the shell, and I have those two things in here. Um, and again, this whole video, I'm not even going to get into how people feel about Google, how, you know, whether Chrome or Firefox or Chromium is better. Um, that's not this debate here. Just talking about the machine. I should have said that at the beginning. Anyway, I booted off that, that um, SD card, and it loaded up Linux Mint, no problem, and then I went to type on the keyboard, and the keyboard wasn't working. Could have something to do when, with this machine, when you go like this, it disables the keyboard when you go into tablet mode. Um, so it might be something I'm sure, I'm almost positive, the keyboard could be working. But I went there, I'm like, keyboard's not working, but I was able to boot into Linux. If I ever need to do that, I can figure this out. I never went into it again because I don't need to because, uh, again, whether it's Android, Chrome OS, or a router, if you have a Linux kernel running and you have a root shell and place for storage that you can put a file system, you can run whatever Debian, whatever operating system you want as long as the architecture is supported. I use Debian, which supports pretty much every architecture that's commonly used. So even if it's a router, I can get Debian running on it as long as I have root access. If it's an Android device and I have root access, I can get Debian running on it. If it's a Chrome OS, I can get Debian running on it. If it's some other Linux desktop running some other version of, of Linux, I can get Debian running on it uh, as long as I have that root shell. And that's all I really care about. Again, that's one of the reasons I love Linux so much. I, I, and not that Linux is the only thing you do. That. Obviously, I'm sure uh, BSD uh, operating systems can do this. Kernels can do this, wherever you want to say it. Um, if it's running Linux kernel, which so many devices do, and you can get a root shell, and again, and you have storage space for a file system, you can run your favorite distro on that. Uh, and for me, it's Debian. And I have all the packages. Again, if it's an ARM device, as long as the packages are open source so they can be recompiled for ARM, you know, for proprietary stuff, you'd have, you, it may not be supported in the architecture, but the 99% of what I use in, actually almost 100%, besides Chrome, which may not be supported by ARM architecture, uh, which this is, this is not ARM architecture here, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, let's see, you name, A. Um, uh, yeah, it's an x86, 64-bit um, processor, um, and it runs great. I have not had any issues. The, the biggest issue I've had as far as, like, I think it's because the machine could be a little sluggish, but I don't notice sluggishness when I use it, is when I am in the Chrome browser, in Chrome OS, um, and I go to click on links, lots of times I go click a link, and it, it thinks that I'm holding, like, I just tap it, but it thinks that I've been holding my finger there, and you know when you hold your finger there, it brings up the context menu, um, but I'm just clicking, but I try not to use the touch screen as much as possible. I'm a keyboard guy, and as long as I'm sitting at the desk, I use my keyboard as much as possible, and I have Vimium installed as an extension for Chrome, so to click on links, I usually just use Vimium, which I just hit F, it gives each link uh, you know, letters, I type in those letters and it opens the link. So that's the only real thing. I have no problem with scrolling and stuff loading any more than, I mean, it's, it's a two to $300 machine, actually 150 to $200 machine, whether you get the touch screen or not. And it runs fine for me. I have not had a gun, gun sluggish on me. I've used GIMP in it. Uh, you could probably run something like uh, Caden Live if you want to do video editing. And if you use proxy files, so they're small files, you could probably edit halfway decent. Because I've done video editing on, uh, on a netbook 10 years ago, <laughs> almost 10 years ago, that only had like a quarter gig of RAM. Uh, so and this is four. So anyway, that being said, don't think that this is like a $2,000 machine. It's a $200 machine. Some people will frown upon any low 
powered machine like this. Um, and for me, and I think most Linux users, you understand the importance of um, using software that's efficient. So don't expect to be playing too many games on this, although I've done a lot of, um, uh, what's it called, uh, 3JS, 3D stuff in the browser on this that works fine. I've played Doom on it. Um, but don't think you're gonna be playing any brand new AAA game on this. Uh, it's just not, well, I don't know. Maybe it would work, I haven't tried. Um, but there are people out there who, if you haven't spent $2,000 on your machine, have a cooling rig, uh, you know, the machine's, you know, crap. To me, to be able to use a low-powered machine efficiently just shows your skill. <laughs> uh, and again, there are things, probably you could run Blender on this. Actually, let me, let me try that real quick. So I just type i3 in my shell here once I go into the chair root and type in my super secret password for root access. i3. Then I will run, do I have Blender installed? Hey, you guys sit here while I type, that, that, that's great. Okay, open up my shell and uh, sudo apt install blender password yes and it's installing my bet you know like you're, you're you're not going to be doing any heavy duty uh, graphics work in blender on this but uh, you know, so sometimes I'll make intros to my videos that are just basically you know a flat plane with some 3D text and lighting on it. Uh, should be able to do that stuff, no problem. Um, you know, I'll let this go in uh, a future video. I'll just show you some of the things on here. So this is this video is mainly talking about it. Um, and again, it's a great low price machine. Whether you're going to use Chrome or not, because again, you can boot into Linux. I had the little keyboard issue, but I'm sure that there's forums on that and you can get the keyboard working and even if you're going to use Chrome OS using Crouton or even making your own chur root or even if you don't need if you don't need root access you could always just install Termux and 99% of what I do can be done in Termux and it interacts with the Chrome OS uh, for the most part besides the whole storage thing uh, no problem so you can have scripts that open up the web browser open up other applications um, and uh, that's it so yeah as long as you know what you're getting and you're not expecting more, this is a great thing for 200 bucks. I personally think it's worth it. Um, besides the whole, I get some people hate Google, I understand why, um, and I mean, you can remove Chrome OS if you want, uh, but the Chrome OS itself, once you go into developer mode, again, Linux kernel and a root shell, for me, that's what I need on any device, and I'm happy. So, thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There's a link in the description. Be sure to check that out. You can search through all my videos from this channel and my second channel. I apologize. My house is a little echoey. I've got tile floor. Um, but I just need to get this video done. I thought this was a good spot to do it. Uh, thank you for watching. And I hope that you have a great day.